unlock your full potential through understanding the profiles in your human design. If you've been wondering what these weird numbers stand for that you can find in your body graph, then you are in the right place because in this video, I'm going to help you understand what the profiles mean, what karma you've come to correct, what role you're meant to be living out in this lifetime, and what each of the one to six numbers mean in your profile. So let's dig deep and find out who you've come to be and how you can start embodying your energetic authenticity to live a life full of purpose. The human design profiles are the numbers that you will find underneath your energy type. So if you look at your body graph description, you will have the profiles here. They're made out of two singular numbers. One is going to be your personality number and one is going to be your design number. And when we combine those, we will understand the karma you've come to correct, the role you're meant to be leading, and understanding that your purpose is not that far off thing, impossible to reach, but that actually you get in touch with your own purpose when you show up authentically every day and share your gifts and embody this role that you have been given in this lifetime to become this role in your human design. The profile numbers in your human design will always show up as two singular numbers. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what each number represents, what it means depending on where you can find them, and actually I want to show you how you can find them for yourself and for your friends and family if you're interested in learning how to read a profile in somebody's chart. The profile is really who you've come to be. It is the role that others expect you to step into. It is when you are starting to accomplish your energetic authenticity. And it's nothing that you necessarily need to do to live out your role or you know, connect to your profile. It's really something that happens when you start up showing as your authentic self. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is believing that the thing that makes us feel the closest to somebody else is having the same energy type. And even though, of course, the energy type is the base from which we operate and we can have a lot of understanding and empathy for somebody else who has our same energy type, there's nothing that beats the compatibility of somebody with the same profile numbers or somebody who has one of the profile numbers in their profile as well. And this is where I can see one of the biggest differences between astrology and human design is that for me, the profile is actually what is closest to astrology. Why? Because human design has the energy type and the energy type has this incredible capacity of giving us a tangible tool on which to operate and start changing things. And if you haven't watched them yet, I invite you to look at the other videos that we have on your energy type to dig deep into the subject because it will absolutely completely change your perspective of how you're operating right now. And so the beauty and the magic of the profile and why I believe it is closest to astrology is because there's nothing that you have to do. There is no tangible tool. It's really all about understanding that when you show up in your life as who you came to be, you're actually stepping into your purpose. And that your purpose is not that far off thing, impossible to get, that is, you know, like compiled to the three words that you have on your Instagram biography, or that, you know, it is the amount of money you're getting on your check every month. That is not your purpose. Your purpose is showing up as who you came to be authentically in every part of your life daily. And that is where the profile and understanding your profile will assist you to do just that. So the profile will always be compiled by two numbers. One is the personality number and one is the design number. This just means that one side is more conscious, something that you're aware of, something that you're in contact with, something that you intrinsically know. And then you have the design side, which is the subconscious, which is the part of you you might not fully connect to, which is the part of you that needs reassurance from the outside to reflect back to you that you actually have that gift or you have that capacity. So I'm gonna teach you in this video real quick how you can find your profile on your own so you don't have to go along and look for the descriptions. And it's quite easy. As you can see, you can find on one of the columns your personality design and on the other column your design, design. 
One of them is conscious, one of them is unconscious. And you want to look at the first number that you have. That is what we call your sun personality, or we're gonna call it your sun design, which is the part of your chart that is connected to your sun astrology. And it has a specific number, so it has a specific gate that is connected to the energy centers in your body graph. But today I want you to forget about the big number and I want you to focus only on the small number that is sitting behind that first big chunk of numbers. So that will be any number from one to six because there are only six numbers in the profile even though there are various combinations of like the small number before, the big number after, and vice versa, okay? And that also represents something that we will get to in a moment. So for you to discover your own profile, I want you to look at your personality column, take the number that is behind the dot, and then I want you to look at your design number, the same, the sun design number, and also look at the small number that is behind the dot. And if you want to find out what profile you are, all you have to do is take the small number behind the profile number and put it in front of the small number of your design number. And in this case, because this is my design, you can clearly see that I am a three, five profile. And that is what I identify with and understanding my profile has completely changed my life and has given me so much permission and understanding to move through life in the way that serves me personally without feeling shame or guilt or having the feeling that I am, that something's wrong with me. So for me, the profile has been one of those pillars in human design that has absolutely transformed my perspective on myself and has helped me so much in achieving the success that I'm celebrating now. Now that you have discovered how to find out your own profile, I am going to talk about each profile. And we're going to go through profile one and six because this is where you will understand the pillars of your profile. And then it will be relatively simple for you to understand and make out how those pro profiles interact, okay? So the profile one is the profile that we call the investigator. You're somebody who learns through understanding. You're somebody who needs to know all of the facts and the details, and you only feel secure when you have accumulated enough statistics and information. That's when you feel your best. And I can see this because 99% of my clients in my readings, when they have a pen and a paper and they're ready to like write everything down, even though the session is recorded, I just know that these are my lovely souls that have a one in their profile. They're nosy, they wanna know all of the things, and whenever there's a problem, they're like, I'm gonna investigate, and then they go like, I always say they're like Dr. Gadget, and they go investigating. Um, and the ones are really like, they're here to learn through understanding. Now we have the second lines, and the second lines are the ones that I feel everybody envies, because the cool thing about the second line is that you just know how to do things, and you can't really explain how. You just, you know, have this zone of genius in any aspect of your life. The second line is somebody who needs time to retreat, time to spend, um, you know, investigating, maybe not investigating, but playfully engaging in the things that you're good at and that you enjoy doing. And some things will come so easy to you that you're not even able to see that it's a gift because, you know, everybody will be like, oh my God, you know how to do that? And you will be like, what? You guys don't know how to do that? And everybody's like, no, that's like super rare. And that's when the second line is like, oh, okay. Like maybe I am good at doing some things. So the second lines are the people that I always envy because for me, they are the people who like, you know, looked at the book an hour before the exam and still had like a great grade. And I was studying for three weeks in advance. It was still just mediocre. Uh, the second lines are those that just play 15 instruments and nobody knows how they just do it. Uh, they're great at languages. It's just these people who have like this, or they draw incredibly well from the get-go. Like they're just incredible illustrators. Uh, so that's what the second line has. The second line that just has this innate ability of being really good at something that they can't explain and they shouldn't have to explain. Now we have a third line. It's your girl, Micah. Um, and the third line, <laughs> 
<laughs> the third line learns just through life experience. It's falling down, getting up, getting your hands dirty, um, you know, pulling up your sleeves and really like putting your hands in the mud. And so the only way that I can, or that any third line can learn something is through actually having that experience. Before I haven't lived it, I cannot tell you if it's right for me or if it's not right for me. And so this, this isn't very glamorous, but through, you know, I'm not here to be an authority. I'm here to take you along the ride of my life. And people love to live vicariously through the third line. So it's really like, you know, I fall flat on my ass and I get back up and I fall on my face and I get back up and I learn and I, I bump into things. And, you know, it's a very intense line to live by because it's so filled with intense experiences. But the first line will read about my stories and be like, oh, I don't have to do this any longer because the third line took that job for me. So rest assured that the third line, even though it's an intense line, there is one perk and that is that you know before anybody else when something doesn't work any longer. So never feel guilty of stopping, of quote unquote giving up because it is your internal guiding system letting you know that this is not the correct path. No matter how nice it looks like on the outside, if you feel that that's done, then that's done and you're allowed to let go and move on to the next thing. Let's move on to the four, the opportunist, which is always a name that doesn't sound great, but what the opportunist stands for is that capacity of connecting to people. They're great, you know, connectors. They are great at creating beautiful relationships with others. They have this tight-knit community. They resonate very strongly with specific people, not with everybody, but with specific people. They're great networkers. And what they have is this need for externalization. And externalization is not a conversation. Externalization means that they need to speak and talk and express. And so you will always know who is a fourth line because they just like talk and talk and talk and talk and you're like, okay, entertaining story. Thank you for that information. Let's get this back one on, getting excited and the earrings are falling off. Okay. So the fourth line has this externalization, right? But it also really has this capacity of understanding that opportunities will come through people you know. So for the fourth line, just being home and working from the computer all day will not bring the desired success. The fourth line needs to go out into the world, meet a friend that will present them a new friend, that they will go for a drink, that they will meet somebody who will become a client. So as a fourth line, allow yourself to move into the direction of connecting to other people and really feel if you like somebody or you don't like somebody because just because you're great at creating tight-knit connections, it doesn't mean you need to have that connection with everybody. And that differentiation is really what is going to help you see who are the people who are going to support you and those who are just not meant for you. Then we have the fifth line. And the fifth line is the save the day energy. It's like, come on guys, we can make this. When everything's just drowning, they're like, let's get a bucket, let's get the water out of, you know, this sinking ship. But the fifth line has to be really aware that it's not here to save everybody. The fifth line is great in crisis. When there's a problem, when there's crisis, when there's drama, the fifth line is going to be like, I am here guys. And I will, you know, like mitigate the fire. That's when the fifth line is in their essence, but they don't have to be on all the time. So they will have moments of pause where they move into the other number of their profile. And when they get called, they're going to go out and really embody that save the day energy. And they're super charismatic and very likable and just have to be aware that because they have this strong projection field where people really see them as their savior, they need to be very aware and tune into their authority, tune into their strategy to know which other people that are meant to have their support and which other people who are just not the right people for them to support or be supported by. And last but not least, we have the six profile. And the six profile for me is one of the most beautiful profiles because the six profile allows you to move through life with three distinctive phases. So we have the year zero to 30. When the six profile has this first 30 years of experience, that's when they're actually living their profile like a three. So if you want to go back and listen to the third profile, do that. 
It's all about, you know, getting your hands dirty, learning through experience, falling down, trial and error. So the first 30 lines of the sixth line are really intense and full of trial and adventures. And so once they move into that Saturn return, that is the age from 27 to 30, that's when they start feeling that pressure. That's when I have my most six profile clients. It's between 27 and 33 because they notice, okay, this is my time to mature. And so what we talk about is that every profile in human design is connected to a part of a house. And so the sixth profile is actually the roof. And so the third profile walks up when they when the Saturn return phase and they walk on top of the roof. And once they are on top of the roof, that's where they can start seeing. That's when they step into the role model that they've come to be as a sixth line. And that is when they start being able to use their perspective to really help others and become these very wise people. But those first 30 years of life are so important to their experience because only when they fall and they really submerge themselves into, into this intense adventure that they have in those first 30 years of life, that's when they can collect the experience that allows them to become wise. And so there's the second life phase, which is from 30 to 50. And that's where they've come to collect all of the information, all of their wisdom, and really, you know, make it into something tangible that they can share with the people in, the, in their community or in their world, right? This is really like an essential part that life experience becomes something tangible that they can share, that they can support the people in their life with. And then they have a revival, and this is so magical because when the sixth profile turns 50, that's when they get a new upheaval of energy. That's when I always say like, you know, they've written a book about their incredible life story and they start to share it with the world and they travel the world and they get this new, just like energetic hype and new opportunity for success and living a fulfilling life. And so the sixth profile has this beautiful notion of being able to create their perfect life. And they're the one profile that for sure is meant to have a soulmate in this lifetime. And so these are the basic descriptions of each profile. Let's get into what it means if we have a smaller number in front or a bigger number in front and vice versa. If you have the smaller number in front, meaning you're a 1-3 or a 2-4 or a 3-5, this means you have a personal karma. And a personal karma means that you will be able to launch into your purpose when you take care of yourself first. That by taking care of yourself first, you're creating support and energetic sustainability for the expansion of the consciousness. Versus if you have what we call the transpersonal karma, the transpersonal karma comes through having the bigger letter in front, like a 6-2, like a 5-1, you are really those souls that have come here to really want to support others. And actually your purpose comes through supporting and being there for others. But as with anything, it is important that even if you have a transpersonal karma, you put the oxygen mask first on yourself so that you're able to create space for others. And within that, within the fact that you are this grounding energy and this grounding force, this is where you can hold the container for other people to prosper. And that is how you step into your purpose. I hope this information has served you. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button so that this information gets shared with the world and we can empower more humans to live in energetic alignment and find their authenticity. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.